I'm Will Kleber with Operation Barbecue Relief. Welcome to American Royal 2013. Tomorrow we start the, the Invitational Contest where over 100 plus ch world champions and grand champions will compete to win and be crowned King of the American Royal. Starting on Saturday night into Sunday, the Open competition begins. 500 plus teams competing against each other to begin to be crowned the Open Champion for the American Royal 2013. Operation Barbecue Relief was formed after the tornadoes that hit Joplin. Since then, we've been on over 16 deployments and fed over 450,000 meals with the support of our wonderful volunteers and organizations like the American Royal and the Kansas City Barbecue Society. Thank you very much. All right, here we are at the American Royal. It's my Royale. The, Roy the, the Ro Royale is what they say. Brad Orson from the Shed Barbecue. Alan Smith, boys not out. It's right here at the OBR website, or at the OBR website. website. Yeah. Is this a website? <laughs> That's yeah. going global right now. Well, we got uh, four different hogs going on. Uh, Boar's Compart. Night Out. Yeah. Compart. Do rock hogs. Redder is better, right? Redder is better. Redder is better. Why? What makes it better? The black Angus of pork. The what? The black Angus of pork. So it's not a website, but you can't. Can be. You can't. <laughs> So uh, right now we're going to go check uh, the Boar's Night Out hog. Bob's up there playing with the hog that you're going to take credit for cooking though, right? The magic. The magic, magic, magic. Uh, today I'm not sure. We've got a party tonight. Uh, it's 20 bucks a head to get in. They said we'll have a couple thousand people out here. Got a band, 20 kegs of beer. I like that. <laughs> Four hogs. It's going to be serious. Serious. A lot of fine women from what I hear. Operation Barbecue Relief, uh, we, uh, I don't personally use the money, but uh, the organization uses the money to uh, go around and feed people after natural disasters. So if something happens, we feel like we can you know, do justice and uh, you know, give more than we're receiving. And I've been on the receiving end of it too. And uh, you know, it's humbling, uh, but it's part of the deal. You know, it's All right, what's happening with this hog is, well, I'm not sure. It's the first time I've seen it, but it looks like we've got some butts that have been cut and laid on the top of this just for juice or protection or what are they for? No protection. You can peel that bacon off of them because they've gone to seed. Oh my goodness. So this has been cooking what guys? 26 hours I think right now. What was addressed? 153? Now this one was 165. This one was? That one was 155. So this is one of four hogs at the OBR event this weekend at the Royal. It's kind of weird cooking a whole hog at the Royal, right? Yeah. It's not a category, but it's a passion. Hey, pulled pork, right? <laughs> hey, man. <laughs> I heard they had sausage category right. on Sunday. Not even any sauce on that. What time is the pork on? Am I on your way around here? No. Mm. That's the part I want. Some of that sausage. <laughs> that stuff's good on a biscuit early in the morning. Especially tomorrow morning when it's going to be nice and cold. Yeah. What's wrapped up right here? Just a piece of wood. It's a prop. Oh, uh, okay. To hold, to hold that belly up. And that loin was a little hard. Just throw the garbage in there. <laughs> Man, this thing smells phenomenal. <laughs> smell vision is next. Yeah, I think it's done being that the bones are pulling out like that. Wow. Look at that piece of meat right there. My sound man's holding the mic for me. Okay, we're actually right now we are uh, what we call waking up our pig. We're, we're about to start our glazing process, which it'll be about a 45 minute glaze. We'll put on three coats while we're waiting on them, and then we'll serve this thing at about 5 o'clock this evening. What time is it now? It is 3.30 right so now. What are, you, what are you actually going to do now? What's the next step? Watch this. Squeak, squeak. Mark, quit that. <laughs> we're actually, right now we're going to drain out this belly so we can get this moisture out, and then that's when we'll start the, the glazing process. That way we can get it nice and good and a good even coat. Color? Y'all cook MBN mostly? Yes. Uh, Lambert back here behind me is a two-time world champ on the MBN circuit. The current, he is the current MBN. That's right. 
Salt Memphis time. barbecue. Or <laughs> Memphis and May barbecue world champ. Shoulder champ. And that's because he beat me. And I'm Brad from the shed. Salt in my eye. <laughs> <laughs> that I have with my gloves and stuff. Just because your hands are smaller than his. <laughs> <laughs> I used to have an apron on. It's like so. Well, you're on the other side. You're in God, the we're doing the so many. Zone. We're doing so many categories, too. It's like driving crazy. What do you want? The gloves on? We'll just the vinyl. Oh, I'm sorry, just the vinyl in. glove. You ready? Yep. And then I'll adjust it. That was good. I just have to move that one. Yeah, you can use this. Okay, I like the number one sample the best. It had um, a great appearance. The, the taste was excellent and it was very, very tender. The one that I liked the least would have been the fourth sample. It was not quite so tender and had kind of a kind of a greasy feel to it to me. Start now. Uh, I follow Therese as lead here. I like number one the very best. It has a crisp, clean bite when you bought it, bit into it. Uh, the least favorite, of course, was uh, again number four. It was it was presented not hot, I guess you would say, <laughs> kind of cold. Uh, so I would say that was my least favorite also. And uh, this, the fifth one. Uh, I judged it just a little bit lower on its uh, color uh, and on appearance, but it uh, made up for it in taste and uh, tenderness, and I thought. My favorite was number three. I thought it was very juicy, great tenderness, and I liked a little bit of a spice at the not very much, but I could taste the spice. Number four would have been my least favorite because it was not served warm. It was a little chilled. And number five definitely surprised me. The appearance was not the dark color, but the taste was very, very good. Um first sample I thought was the best off the plate. Uh, looked really nice. The flavor I thought was really good and they had some really interesting flavor to it but you could actually taste the chicken as well which is great. My least favorite was number four on the plate. Um, I thought actually it was fairly bland and flavorless and I thought that the skin was pretty tough. Uh, the second sample on the plate they turned in two different preparations and I thought the the thigh was great, but the wing actually had some of the marinade still in it and it made it, uh, you couldn't taste the chicken at all. But overall, by the way, all of them were presented really well. My favorite of the chickens was number two. It had a little kick to it, which I enjoyed. Uh, my least favorite was number four. It was very mushy and bland tasting. My favorite was number three, and I thought it had a really good flavor. I thought it was very tender and juicy, and it was an excellent piece. Uh, my least favorite was number four, and I thought it actually had a very bitter aftertaste, and I had a hard time 
uh, making that go away, and it was kind of dry. So towards the top, kind of in the middle. You got it. Yep. Yeah, he's already covered anyway. Okay. Looked really nice. Well, my favorite uh, out of these was number two. It had looked good. It had good flavor, and the texture was pretty good on it. Uh, my least favorite was number five. Uh, it was underdone, it, and uh, the taste was just a little off for me. So. My most favorite was number five. It had great taste, had, had good moisture. My least favorite was number five. It had uh, it, it lacked tenderness. It was underdone. Uh, Hopefully, I said my favorite was number four. Okay. If, if I didn't, that's what I meant. Okay. Uh, my most favorite was number one. Um, I liked the appearance on it. Um, it was good on tenderness. The least favorite was number five. It was not tender at all, and, and the flavor seemed just a little bit off. All right, um, I guess we're doing favorite and least favorite, and the least favorite was the easiest part. That's number five. I'm in agreement there. Um, the, uh, I thought number two would probably be my favorite. I scored it the best. Um, I like number six's flavor, but uh, I think it may be as far as done this had a little bit of a challenge there so um, I like number six the best I thought one and two were uh, overcooked and number five was uh, not cooked well enough uh, flavor across the board was pretty good but uh, number six kind of hit it on all parts well I think uh, in this particular round of judging I think it was a toss-up from the, the good ones. Uh, I thought that number two was pretty tender. Um, I thought the prettiest rib was actually number three and probably could have won it if their taste was better. It was a little bit dried out, so it was overcooked. I thought number three had good flavor. It looked good, and it was tender. Uh, and I also liked the... Uh, the flavor for number six. The worst of the bunch was clearly number five. the fall or stay like that? I'm going to just press down yeah, a little bit on it. Okay. I want it to kind of hang out just like that. All right, my favorite choice was number four and my least favorite, well number four because it tasted well and had a good taste to it and my worst was number three because to me it was just a little mushy. Okay. You ready? My favorite was number three. It had a good meat taste and uh, no displeasurable aftertaste. I liked it. And my least favorite was number two. It was a little tough and I didn't think it had very much flavor into the meat. Uh, my least favorite was number one. It seemed to be very salty and a lot of smoke flavor and dry. And I liked number three because it was very tender and had a nice earthy flavor to it. It wasn't overpowering. 
My least favorite was number one. It was uh, kind of dry. Uh, my favorite was um, probably number three. It had really good flavor and was tender. My least favorite was number one. It was mushy and kind of dry. My favorite would be number three. It had a good flavor on the outside. My least favorite was number one. It was overcooked and kind of mushy. Uh, my favorite was number four. It was moist, had good flavor, and was cooked about right. In my opinion. Yeah, this is a brisket competition. Uh, one through six, uh, from top left on. Uh, I like number two the best. Or no, excuse me. Number two was probably the worst on my on my plate. A little overdone, and just pretty much a roast beef type flavor. Uh, number five, bottom center, was my favorite. Number three was also good, but, but five was probably my pick of the litter on this brisket. And the brisket, uh, number two was my least favorite. It fell apart when I tried to take it out of the box. It was way overcooked. It had almost no flavor to it. My favorite was number three. It was done correctly. It pulled apart easy, but it didn't fall apart. It had a nice flavor to it. My second one would have been uh, number five. It was done really well and had a nice flavor to it as well. Well, I'll agree with that previous assessment. I did like three of the best, too, although six, to me, tasted a little bit better than number five. The problem that you had is some were definitely overcooked, um, but all in all, it was a fair sampling. I found the judging to be um, a little more difficult this year. The taste, and I believe it's dealing with the wood, but uh, my favorite was uh, number five, and my least favorite was number two. Uh, the reason the number two was my least favorite was because it was very much overdone and mushy to the taste when you would eat it. Uh, and thank you. I enjoyed it. Uh, thank you. The least favorite for me was number two, and the most favorite was number five. Uh, number two was just overdone, uh, fell apart, was dry. Number five at least had some nice flavor with it, good beef flavor as well. Uh, very much appreciated it. My most favorite was number one had good beef flavor to it, had good pull test, good flavor throughout. My least favorite was number two, overdone, mushy, and texture was uh, way off. Thank you. Welcome to the America Royals World Series of Barbecue. My name is Bob Peterson. I'm president and CEO of the America Royal, and we are delighted to have you tonight. Those of you who were here with us last year will remember on this very stage where we inaugurated the Barbecue Hall of Fame with its home here at the American Royal. We're here today to continue this tradition by inducting the three newest members. We have some very special individuals sharing the stage with us tonight. Let me begin by welcoming our barbecue coordinator, Ms. Kim Palmer. Kim oversees, yay Kim. Kim oversees the World Series of Barbecue Championships, which as you can see, is the world's largest barbecue event. As you also know, the American Royal is a nonprofit, and this barbecue weekend, along with other events that we host throughout the year, help us raise funds for scholarships and education. Putting on this world spotlight is no small task. Kim helps make the World Series of Barbecue Championships happen. And we're honored to include this special ceremony as part of our barbecue weekend. Kim Palmer. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Peterson, and thank you for being a part of this barbecue event. We appreciate that you are here with us tonight, and I'd like to thank you for taking a little bit of time and stepping away from your smokers to join us to induct and celebrate the newest members of the Barbecue Hall of Fame. Allow me to introduce Mr. Charlie Tietrich. He serves as a co-chair of the barbecue and is instrumental in helping to make the World Series of Barbecue a, a success. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Charlie Tietrich. Thank you. 
Thank you. In 2012, the American Royal became the Barbecue Hall of Fame, which was originally co-founded by Ray Basso and Mike Tucker. Ray, Mike, we'd like to thank you for starting something that allows us to honor the achievements and barbecue excellence and noteworthy contributions to the barbecue community. Tonight, we're honored to have two special gentlemen conducting the inauguration, your Barbecue Hall of Famers, Johnny Trigg and Guy Fieri. Ladies and gentlemen, you know Johnny Trigg is the godfather of barbecue. He's a legend on the barbecue circuit with more than 60 grand championships and over 600 contests under his belt. Feared most by his fellow competitors for his award-winning ribs and brisket, Johnny remains the oldest active competitor in barbecue. So although he retired one of his famous black hats to the Barbecue Hall of Fame Museum when he was inaugurated last year, Johnny has no intention of retiring from barbecue or slowing down anytime soon. Johnny's going to be presenting the trophies to tonight's inductees. The trophies are custom made by sculptor artisan Stretch and John Boo's Butcher Blocks. And your host for tonight's induction ceremony is Guy Fieri. Now you may have seen guys somewhere before, perhaps on bottles of barbecue sauce at your neighborhood grocery store, or one of his many TV shows, or right here last year when Guy was inducted into the Barbecue Hall of Fame. <laughs> Guy, you've got a special bond with the American Royal and with the World Series of Barbecue Championships. You've competed here before, you've been a supporter of the Kids' Q and teaching tips in the pit to the next generation of barbecuers and you've been inducted to the Barbecue Hall of Fame here. So give me a sign, you ready to induct these guys? You guys ready to witness this? All right, guys. Nicely done, nicely done. I will tell you what, I've been in some crazy situations with some crazy people, and this right here, ladies and gentlemen, takes the cake. Sitting on stage with these cats, big round of applause, come on. I mean, when you try to explain to me, anybody from California? All two of us, that's great, that's awesome. Anybody from New York City? All six of you, that's great. If you're not from here, try to explain to somebody what happens at the Royal is almost impossible. This is a culture, an attitude, an energy, a family like you'll find nowhere else. And to be inducted into the Hall of Fame, the Barbecue Hall of Fame at the American Royal, to me, is the highlight of my career. I think, Johnny Trigg, you feel the same way? <laughs> barbecue Hall of Fame, what's it about? It's recognizing and preserving the heritage of barbecue. I mean, just think about everything you've done in the summer involved barbecue one way or another. Getting inducted into this means a tremendous amount. What is it about? It's about the people that have given their life to it. Myron mixing over there, I'm telling you something, dude. Barbecue sauce is flowing in your veins. I've seen it. But this is about educating the future, educating the, the teams, educating the kids. And that's the whole attitude that we have here at the American Royal. That's what this is about. It's about kids and education. And you saw, anybody come out and see the kids barbecue today? Un All six of you did, really? Come on. Did you see those kids? It is barbecue's top honor to be elected into the Barbecue Hall of Fame. Now the inductees are going in three different categories. Business and industry, pit master, I don't know who's getting that one, and celebrity humanitarian. It is my honor, and I gotta tell you, I got a chance to talk to these folks. It is my honor, and you don't even know one of them, but you're gonna, you, you'll figure out how your, what your relationship is. But it's my honor to recognize the three inductees this year for 2013. Please, ladies and gentlemen, Adam Perry Lang. I like how humble he is. Yep, just me. Super chef all over the world. London restaurant, New York restaurant. I live in Manhattan Beach now, but that's me. Mr. George Stevens. That's not George, by the way. But I'll tell you about George in a little bit. This guy will blow your mind. He has helped you more. He's helped us all. 
And there should be like a drum roll. I think the jets are going to fly over. I think we're going to light fireworks. They're probably going to have a stampede of horses. I can go on and on and on. Ladies and gentlemen, the pit master. Give it up, Myron Mixon. <laughs> Oh, man. Anybody got a cold one in their hand? Just making sure you're hydrated. This could take a long time. Let's talk about my buddy over here, APL. Adam Perry Lang. I'll tell you, I was in New York City. Went to lunch with one of my agents. And he says, you know what? I know that you're probably hungry for some barbecue. And I'm going to take you out. I said, there ain't no barbecue in New York City. You're not, this ain't going to work. And I don't think Paul Kirk's place was going then. And so I said, all right. And they take me to this place called Daisy May. And the barbecue was outrageous, and the barbecue came from that dude right there, Adam Perry Lang. Now, I'm going to start talking in different languages. Y'all juiced up, you probably understand them. My buddy Mario Batali, he calls APL, he calls Adam, he calls him the go-to man, the go-to brother for meat and fire. This guy can cook it. This guy's cooked everything. I don't even want to ask some of the animals that he's cooked. But he's very serious about expanding the whole attitude and energy. He's got this fantastic book, a best-selling book out called Serious Barbecue. And ladies and gentlemen, let's take a couple minutes and watch this great little video about APL. So humble, so cool, and so creative. An amazing chef, a great barbecue. I was just talking to APL. He just moved from New York to Manhattan Beach. Just, there you go, just random shout-outs. I like that. There we go. They're getting <laughs> free drinks. No, that's not true. Um, but I was just talking to APL, he says, yeah, I'm really just kind of focusing what I'm going to do. I'm going to open a new restaurant, and I'm going to start making my own charcoal now. Start, I'm going to start making my own air. <laughs> and what a humanitarian. This dude, over a, over a thousand meals a week, he'll cook for local charities and to help out at the LA Food Bank. I mean, he's a great humanitarian, a great friend, a great dude, an amazing chef. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please celebrate with me in welcoming Mr. Lang, congratulations on being inducted to the Barbecue Hall of Fame at the American Royal. Now, Johnny Trigg is my Vanna White. Never thought I'd ever say that. He's probably going to kick me off stage. But Johnny will present the trophy to APL. Come on, you guys. Adam. It is my privilege and honor to give you this trophy. I have cooked against you and admired you on the circuit, and then you left us and went to England, and here you are back in America and come back to us. So we look forward to competing against you again, and you well deserve to receive this honor. Is it just me, or when Johnny Trigg talks, does it sound like John Wayne? I can say all the things I want up here, but when Johnny Trigg, everybody here, shh, Johnny Trigg's talking. I don't even need to be here. Johnny's just going, I want to get too cool for school. Hey, before we move on to our next inductee, I got to give a big shout out to a little dude standing right over here. His name is Richie. Richie won grand champion in the kids' cook-off today, and you should have seen it. Come on, give me some. Give me some. Oh! We better teach this kid how to start posing. I don't think this is the last you're going to see him at the American Royal. He's after Myron Mixon. I can already see it. You see him eyeball him? Big round of applause. Kids cook off. Right job.
Just love it. I was over there with those kids today, and they were in it to win it. I mean, he made a mushroom sauce, got a little pan on the on the, on the hot coals, and he's stirring it. And he said, I came over, and I gave a little taste. and said, I'll put a little salt in that. But, um, and he ends up rocking the house and winning the whole thing. All right. When I said a moment ago, when I was introducing the inductees, I said George Stevens, and everybody gave me... Who's George Stevens? Well, George Stevens is a dude that took us all from cooking on the ground and put it up in the world famous, everybody has one, if you don't, you're living under a rock. He's the dude that invented the Weber Grill. This is his son, Jim, his daughter, Maggie. They're, on, they're here on his behalf. And unfortunately, unfortunately, this fantastic inventor passed away in 1993 at the age of 71. But he has made an impact on our lives as chefs, as backyard chefs, as barbecuers all over the world. Let's take a moment. Now, here's the deal. Back in 1952, George started making these barbecues out of these spheres that they were using to make buoys. They made the buoys out of metal. I guess they didn't do them out of, plastic, uh, out of plastic back then. And he called it George's Barbecue Kettle. Not as ringy. Not as ringy as Weber. But he worked for the Weber Brothers factory, for the metal factory. He was the one that was instrumental in starting to sell the barbecue in 1952. And he also helped form the barbecue division of the Weber Brothers Metal Factory Works. Now, unfortunately, as I said, he passed away in 1993. 71 years old, but can you imagine what he'd be saying right now? He's watching. What an impact. Who owns a Weber? Who's had one? Come on now. Who needs one? There you go. Well, these folks have made a huge impact. I've seen several barbecue competitions that they've helped support. I hope we're going to be have an opportunity to have some support from you folks in, in Royals to come. You know what? If you think about what makes a great barbecue, it's you. But you got to have great equipment, and I think anybody here that has ever cooked on one really would appreciate what your dad has done for us. So thank you very much. Maggie, Jim. And just so you know, Weber is the world's largest manufacturer of grills, smokers, patio furniture, rocket ships, all kinds of things. I don't know about the rocket ship part, but the other part I think is pretty true. So help me, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to induct... This man, George Stevens Sr. And Jim and Maggie would ask you to come up here, please. Congratulations, George Stevens Sr. on being inducted into the Barbecue Hall of Fame at the American Royal 2013. Show me up, Johnny, this is great. Maggie and Jim. It, if I had one cooker, I've been competing for 24 years, if I had one cooker, I would choose the Weber Kettle. I think it's the greatest cooker ever made and ever will be made. Is that right, everybody? Yeah. It is with my great honor and privilege to present this in honor of your father, Jim and Maggie, right there. Thank well, you. Johnny, thank you very much. Right there. Step on over, you guys. Watch it, watch it, watch it. Come on now. We're going to repo your Weber if you don't give me more love. Are these? Very nice. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. All right. So before we go any further, I do want to talk about these trophies. Uh, one of my really good friends who's a dude we had on Triple D, who's a chef, who's a great artist, lives here in Kansas City, owns a funky little joint called Grinders. Anybody ever been there? Oh. The bomb. Well, my buddy Stretch made these uh, made these trophies. I have one at my house. It is one of my pride possessions. So uh, thank you very much, Stretch. I don't know where you're at, but you're the man. Right there. You can't see him. Stand up. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Now, I don't know if you guys brought a lawn chair or anything to sit on, but you might want to sit down for a bit. I'm going to talk about the man. And his fan club. <laughs> All two of them, the same ones from New York City. Ever since you moved to London. Myron Nixon. Come on. 
He knows who's not cheering. He'll keep an eye on. He's like Santa. The most, win the winningest man of barbecue. The first competition he was in, he took first place. And it hasn't stopped then. This dude has collected more trophies, awards, fat checks, rings, you name it. I mean, houses, Winnebago. I don't know what else they've given you, but he's won it all. He's the pit master for Jack's Old South. His dad started that, correct? But he's not kicking it down to his kid. He made him go form his own team. <laughs> and he's wearing that ribbon around. <laughs> number nine and four. Was it number nine and four today? Very nice, very nice. Number nine in pork. Now, he's a tough competitor. A lot of people, including myself, are scared of him. It's nice to see him smiling. Not growling at people, but I'll tell you something. Oh, the tough exterior is real, but the dude inside and the barbecue professional, the mentor of barbecue, the time and energy and impact that he has made on this, on this world of barbecue has Come on now. If you didn't get a chance to see this, don't worry. We're going to run it on a loop over Myron's, over his boot. Look at that, man. This dude is all real deal barbecue. Barbecue's in his blood. His kid Michael got ninth today. That's a big deal. He's been setting the bar for everybody. He continues to run the show. What an honor, man. To be in the Barbecue Hall of Fame for me is huge. To see you now in it, that just raises my stakes. Johnny Chick feels the same way. This is an honor for everybody to be here today to watch it. I want you to remember, he has won three grand champions at Memphis in May. Three whole hogs at the Jack. And he's the only team. He led his team to grand champion in Memphis in May and a KCBS sanctioned event and also grand champion at the Florida Barbecue Association all in the same year. Now a judge pit masters. Poor people that have to deal with that. He will forget more about barbecue than most people will ever learn. How'd you like that one? I saved that as my whammy for the end. Big. I didn't get the whole big old crowd response I was looking for. He will forget more than most people will ever learn in barbecue. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand up. Round of applause. It is time, Mr. Myron Nixon. Congratulations for being inducted into the Barbecue Hall of Fame at the Great American Royal. Come on. Just, just hold on, big boy. I've been waiting ever since that. Come over here. Come on over here. I just got back from England. I, I don't care where you came from. You're, you're mine now. <laughs> but let me tell you, ever since I got the call and, and uh, asked if I could do this, and I said, who's going to be the honorees right there? And they only said one guy, and I said, I'll do it. <laughs> I'll do it. That's Myron Mixon. And man, have I stayed awake at night thinking what I was going to say. I keep repeating it, I keep changing it, and it's not good either. But this old buzzard right here, he, you're on my court, buddy, <laughs> right here. One thing he does, he said he's the three-time world champion. Well, that's a true statement. But let me tell you, my woolly booger friend, I am a two-time world champion. You cook one whole hog, and I cook brisket, ribs, chicken, and, and a rib, pork. That's four categories. So I guess right there, that's four times right there, and that was it only one year. Then I went back and did it again two years later. So, buddy, you're playing second fiddle right now. <laughs> also, you know, he's been on the pit masters right there. Right there. Well, payback is hell. If you know, I was on the pit masters a couple, three times right there. I got roasted a couple of times. Said my meat wasn't any good or to this. Didn't have enough salt and all this. I, I cooked a whole hog. Never cooked one in my life right there. He, he said, you're not supposed to use a damn knife to get the, get the pork off of there, boy. I just said, well, okay. Till I got it behind the stage later. <laughs> but let me tell you something. 
This guy here has done wonders for barbecue. He's, a, he's been a big asset from it. He's been a world true champion right there. And it is my honor to present Myron Mixon. And Myron, as you always said, forget the damn trophy, give me the check. You're right. There ain't no check tonight, but we've got a trophy here with us right there for you. My congratulations, Brian. Thank you, sir, so much. <laughs> Thank you. So our, ta our table got lucky, I guess. Uh, we were at the end of the line, so normally you see six, sometimes seven, but today we got eight chickens to judge. Uh, for me, my most favorite was this entry at the, the end here. It was uh, very flavorful, moist, and uh, very tasty. Least favorite for me was uh, this one here. Or actually, it's this one. Felt like it was just uh, dry. The skin was very dry and, and uh, didn't care for that one as much. For me, the most, uh, the one I liked the uh, most was this one right here. And uh, it was very tenderful. It was uh, flavorful and uh, really moist. And the least one I liked was this one right here. Um, it was a little drier than I'd expected. Um, but, but otherwise, overall, pretty good. Uh, uh, we did tell what number we like and what number we like. I'm sorry. Do you want to go again? No. Go ahead. Uh, my favorite was definitely number four. The sauce was uh, really spicy, and the, the skin was very tender and moist, and uh, I really enjoyed that. The, uh, I had two least favorites, uh, number seven and number eight. Uh, the skin for me was, was very rubbery, hard to get through, and uh, the meat was dry, so I didn't enjoy it. Okay, uh, I'm looking for clean chicken flavor, and I found that in number five, uh, but the skin was hard to get through. So um, my favorite then would be number seven or eight, because for the sole reason that they were not spicy. The others were burning my tongue. Those were just right. Well, as far as taste goes, I liked uh, number five the best. Um, it wasn't the prettiest as it presented, but uh, the taste was excellent. Um, just the right mixture of smoke and spice. The one that I thought was the prettiest when it came out of the box was uh, number eight, but uh, I was disappointed. When I tasted it, um, it was uh, too salty as a, as a spice rub, and the meat was tough. Okay, for me, um, number four was just a little too spicy, but I really liked the flavor of it. And my least favorite was number six. It, it was just a little too tough and didn't have much flavor. Thank you. I, I really liked number, uh, number four was my favorite. Uh, I think it was sauce, had a good flavor profile. Um, it was tender, but not too tender. And uh, it was moist. That was my favorite, number four. Uh, probably, I would say number six.
it was tough. Um, the flavor wasn't quite right, and uh, the tender, tenderness to me was off. A little bit too much tug. So. Uh, number four, I like the sauce. The uh, tenderness was good. Uh, and uh, just overall, I uh, thought uh, it was the better one on the, on the plate. Uh, number three, uh, the uh, meat was just a little bit lean and a little bit dry for me. Number one was my favorite. Um, it was tender. Uh, it was moist. I liked the way it came off the bone. Uh, my least favorite was number six. I uh, wasn't real fond of the, the sauce on it, plus it was, was tender. I mean, it was not tender. It was very tough. Uh, number five was my favorite. Uh, had a good sauce, had a good flavor profile, good smoke flavor to it. Um, least favorite was number six. Uh, rib was slightly undercooked. Uh, not a whole lot of flavor to it. And that's it. Uh, my favorite was uh, a tie between four and five. Uh, really good smoke, smell, and taste. And my least favorite, I would say, would be number six also. My favorite was number five. Um, the tenderness and the flavor profile, just everything went together. It was a very good rib. My least favorite was number six. It was a little bit tough, and I don't think they had quite enough time to develop the flavor. Five favorite fantastic rub delicious tender least favorite too I couldn't bite through it salt mine was number six I thought that was uh, best as far as taste and tenderness and I'd have to agree with I think it was number four that I didn't uh, didn't care for so. my favorite was number five awesome rub awesome taste loved everything about it my least favorite was number three, which I thought was a little tough, not a great flavor. My favorite was number five. Um, the, the flavor profile was spot on. It was almost borderline where it was a little overdone, but really good, number five was. My least favorite would be somewhere between three and six. They were a little tough and Sometimes I would just leave the money muscle out and not put it in because it cost you. The, the pulled was pretty good. Okay, my... There wasn't a, a, a presentation here that didn't have some kind of fault. Nobody got the total package uh, uh, around. I had an interesting combination with number three where with my pieces the money muscle was tough and underdone and the, the the chunks were overcooked. Hadn't run into that before. Um, I love the flavor of number five, uh, but the money muscle was mushy. Um, uh, I really like number one, probably my favorite, but it was pretty. It was pretty lacking in in flavor. Uh, it didn't have a full robust flavor but I could really tell that it was pork. It was pork that I was tasting. It didn't get influenced very much by the sauce, so I liked that. Okay, I like number two the best because it had a good smoky kind of a flavor and the topping was sweet and kind of salty. Um, it pulled apart just about right. It had a nice little tug to it and then, uh, you want my least favorite now? Okay, my least favorite was number three, and it just pulled right apart too easily. It, uh, to me, didn't have much flavor except salt. Um, that's about it. <laughs> okay. Hi, I like number two also. Uh, it uh, that had no aftertaste. Uh, tasted like uh, beef and uh, I look for the s smoky flavor uh, some of the others uh, uh, I guess number three 
had an aftertaste and that was uh, unpleasant. And uh, number six was uh, cut with the grain, uh, very thin. Um, there was not a lot of flavor, and uh, however, it was tender. I, again, liked number two, like everyone else. That was the best. It had the best texture. Uh, the flavor was very good. Uh, my least favorite was number four. I thought it was tough and kind of flavorless. Uh, my second best was, uh, I liked number six. And then the other three kind of were lumped in together as not, not favorites. I like number two. I got nines all the way across the board on that. Had a good flavor, good tenderness, and had a good bark on the uh, one side. My least favorite was number one, primarily because of the toughness, and also did not have a good bark, good uh, good ring on it. My favorite was number two. It had a good smoky flavor, and um, the rub enhanced the meat. And my least favorite was number six. It was dry, and it wasn't trimmed very well. I end, to make it complete, I think number two was the best of all of them as well. It was just a great flavor and an absolutely beautiful texture. Uh, the least favorite, probably number one. I found it just a little chewy for my liking. <laughs> 